What's up, Cuso here with another episode of Passive Exiles for Dummies, and today we're gonna have a look at Shaper. To fight Shaper, we need four fragments. We need Fragment of the Hydra, Phoenix, Chimera, and Minotaur. And we can get these from the three possible ways. The more obvious one is uh, we buy them, or we buy the Guardian maps, or we work uh, our way all the way to the center of the Atlas and unlock them ourselves. Each of Shaper's Guardians drops a piece corresponding to their names. Larry the Hydra will drop Fragment of the Hydra. Mace of the Minotaur will drop Fragment of the Minotaur, etc, etc. These fragments have a 100% drop chance. The bosses will always drop a fragment no matter the rarity of the map. Once we have all four fragments, we put them in the map device in order. Hydra to the top left, Phoenix to the top right, Chimera bottom left, Minotaur bottom right. Once in Shaper's Realm, we can't fight Shaper straight away. We have to kill four mini bosses of each corner of the map. These bosses are all random, but it's always the same set of pool of bosses. I tried to wiki the pool, but I didn't find anything, so here's the list I managed from memory. Uh, Combs, Daresso, Weaver, Brutus, Laser Beam Piety, Act 3 Piety, Gravicious, Mervale, Dominus, Phase 2 Malachi, Val Oversoul, uh, the Cyclone guy from uh, Act 4 in Daresa's Dream, uh, Rigvald, the Plaza boss, the Torture Chamber boss, and the Lava Chamber boss. Now, if I forgot anyone, uh, do let me know in the comments. Once all four bosses are dead, we can access Shaper from the portal in the middle. So Shaper has three phases. In phase one, we have to get him down to 50%, and then it will teleport us to a different dimension where we have to fight Ads, and at the end, uh, we have to fight a mini boss, the Void Guy, the boss from the laboratory map. He does Spectral Throw, Frostbolt, and a Charge Up Slam that's pretty easy to see and avoid, and it also le leaves a big damage over Time Vortex. I do not recommend tanking the Slam, as it will almost surely one-shot you. In Phase 2, we get Shaper down to 25% health, and we're once again teleported to a different dimension, where we once again have to fight the laboratory boss. He does the exact same things, except in addition he periodically does a volley of frost bolts. So if you're ranged, it's fairly easy to avoid. If you're melee, I suggest you let a Warchief Totem do the work, as he can be quite sketchy as a melee character. In Phase 3, exactly the same as previous phases, except this time he summons a clone of himself that shares Shaper's abilities. He's a little weaker and untargetable, so we can't actually damage him, and he can troll the shit out of you if you don't pay attention. Alright, now to have the phases down, uh, let's go over Shaper's abilities. Every now and then, a black floating ball will come in from either direction and follow you around. If you touch it, it will break and leave a vortex of cold damage over time, which also slows you. They will come in for, uh, more frequently as each phase goes by. It's very important to try and pop them off to the side of the area, and whatever you do, don't pop them in the middle, because the bubble phase will kill you. Uh, I'll get back to this phase a little later on. He has a auto attack that's pure physical. He has a laser beam that's triple elemental damage, but very easy to avoid since it has a build-up animation and he only targets one location the entire time he channels which means it won't follow you around. He also has a projectile attack that looks sort of like ball lightning. It deals cold damage with cold penetration. If you get hit by two, you're most likely gonna die. A crit from one of these can also freeze you in place. He does a three at a time at your location that will accelerate in speed the further they travel. So move away from the first ball and the two behind it is not gonna hit you. So just keep on strafing until he stops doing this attack. It's also very important to note that he will never use this skill if you're in melee range. Should you do it in melee range, that means you weren't close enough to him. And he also has a one-shot slam. What a big surprise. So this slam is pure physical, so uh, if you're a jug, it's not even gonna tickle. The slam is super easy to avoid, but it tricks you. I've seen so many screw-ups uh, on the timing as to when to move away. Uh, when he slams, he will disappear in darkness and then he will reappear on top of you and then slam you. It's uh, very similar to Malachi uh, from Act 4, where he burrs on the ground and then reappears on you and then slams you. So most people try to uh, avoid the slam when he disappears, when in fact you should uh, try to avoid it when he reappears. 
If you're not slowed, you can just quicksilver the entire animation, but I do suggest you practice to uh, leaf slam, flame dash, blink arrow, whatever, once he reappears. He also has an ad phase where he will become untargetable, open up a portal, and a bunch of ads will stream out targeting Zana. If Zana dies during this phase, she will not provide a protective shield in the middle during the bullet, fa bullet hell phase, which more or less means you're 100% screwed. However, if you already know this phase is too much for you, what you can do is you can let the ads kill Sana straight away. But it has to be very early on during the ad phase, it has to be almost immediately. So if you do this, she should resurrect in time in order to place the protective shield in the middle again. The bullet tail phase, or the bubble phase as uh, I prefer to call it, Shaper will rise in the air and shoot millions of cold projectiles with cold penetration all over the area, and each projectile deals a retarded amount of damage. So when Sana yells out, come to me, or stay close, uh, whatever it is, you listen and you stay in the red circle. Also, uh, as she does this, I suggest scanning the area quickly for floating balls. You have a couple of seconds to do this, because if a floating ball flies in and touches you inside the red circle, it will pop and deal damage to you. This is also why it's so important to not pop balls in the middle, because uh, you're only protected from outside damage, not uh, the inside damage. Should a ball fly inside, however, you actually do have room to move around in a circle inside the bubble to avoid popping it. It's uh, a bit difficult to learn at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's, uh, it should be pretty easy. So, I hope this video has been a good watch, and I hope I didn't forget anything. Uh, please check out my other Passive Exile for Dumbest videos, and if you have a suggestion for an addition to this series, please leave a comment down below. Thank you, and good day.